The entire medical community is abuzz with news about Pharmanutra's announcement of its latest technology to fight iron deficiency. This is great news for those who are tired of taking the same old iron supplements and have to bear with their innumerable adverse effects. We'll discuss all the different aspects of this new discovery in this video and explain exactly how it works and why it's such a big thing in this day and age. First up, what's the idea behind this new technology? Pharmanutra's new medicinal discovery is the novel formulation, sucrosomial iron, or SI. What makes it so innovative for today is the way the iron inside the formulation is packaged. It's done so in a way that makes it easier for your body to absorb it and make the most of the iron supplied in the supplement. The main component in SI is ferric pyrophosphate. You don't need to worry about that long and weird name. It's basically iron combined with phosphate, but you don't have to get into the chemistry of its composition. Now, this iron is packaged inside a network of phospholipids and sucrester. Sucrester is a combination of the word sucrose and ester. What sucrester does is that it offers a kind of protective barrier to the iron. Iron is absorbed mainly through your stomach and intestines, and to reach those organs, it has to travel a long distance. Of course, there will be plenty of obstacles along the way which can degrade the iron. To protect the iron from the degradation, it's coated in phospholipids and sucrester, because both of them act as a reliable surfactants and deliver the iron to its destination in one piece. All of this incredible protection of the main iron compound allows effective absorption of the iron. And now, it's all about the resistance. Iron's biggest enemy in your body is the acid your stomach produces. By the time usual iron supplements reach your stomach, most of the iron has been destroyed by the acidity. As a result, very little iron is left to be absorbed by the body. And sucrosomial iron provides a very innovative solution to this problem. We talked about how the ferric pyrophosphate, the main iron component in this preparation, is trapped inside a matrix of phospholipids and sucrose esters. In very simple terms, these two things act as iron's personal bodyguards. They protect it from the destructive action of the acidic contents of the stomach. The longer the tablet can resist the action of the acid, the better it's absorbed, because in that case, the iron finds its way to the side of absorption in one piece, as it survived the stomach and its acidic terrain. Once it reaches the destination, which here is the lining of the intestines, the iron can be easily taken up by the cells of the body. Here in the intestine, they are called enterocytes. Also, there are some special cells here called the membranous cells, or M cells for simplicity. These cells also take up some of the iron and then transport it to the rest of the body through the lymphatic channels. Next, it's better distribution that goes a long way. A lot of scientific evidence is available to prove that sucrosomial iron does indeed work and that it reaches the target tissues in your your body. We'll talk about this a little bit now. We've gone over the protective coat of phospholipids and sucrostor around the iron inside sucrosomial iron. Once the supplement reaches the intestine, it enters your body's bloodstream via two routes. The first one is the transcellular pathway. The tablet is taken up by the intestinal cells and finds its way to the blood vessels at the other end. The second pathway is the paracellular pathway. Here, the tablet finds its way to the blood vessels through the gaps between the intestinal cells instead of going right through the cells. Now that it's inside the blood stream is carried to the liver. Inside the liver, we have hepatocytes, as a fancy name for liver cells. What these cells do is that they break down the protective coating around the iron in the tablet. After that, the ferric pyrophosphate undercover of the coating is readily available for the body to use. This iron then enters the blood, and in there, it gets bound to a protein called transferrin. From the name itself, you can probably guess what's the purpose of this protein. It helps transfer the iron to tissues where it's required. Mainly, it goes to your bone marrow, the part of your bones where all the red blood cells are made. And most importantly, no more side effects. The trouble with most iron supplements is that the oral tablets cause a lot of gastric problems in people who take them. Because of that, they tend to skip on their daily doses, and it leads to decreased compliance. It's just how it is. If a medicine you're taking is giving you trouble, you just decide that it's better to not take it and avoid the side effects. When oral dosages aren't working, doctors prescribe intravenous formulations. Now, there's a problem here too. Yeah, we're always running into problems with these iron supplements. Intravenous administration of iron can cause severe hypersensitivity reactions, and recent studies have shown how iron infusions can even lead to iron toxicity. Yeah, you might be deficient for the mineral, but that's no reason to give your body more than what it can take. Sucrosomial iron's unique structure confers it the ability to be better absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract. Not just that, but out of all available supplements on the market, this one's got a great bioavailability. Bioavailability of any medicine is described as how much of the taken dose is available to the body. Since SI has a protective covering, it's shielded from the body's harsh internal environments, and as a result, it reaches its site unharmed. Because of all these properties, there are fewer side effects compared to oral iron salts and intravenous infusions of 
iron. Lastly, let's discuss sucrosomial iron in clinical settings. There are a lot of medical fields where doctors frequently encounter cases of severe iron deficiency. Some of these fields are gastroenterology, cardiology, nephrology, and oncology. Plenty of recent scientific studies have demonstrated the effectiveness of using SI supplements in these fields to treat iron deficiency. One main area of concern for doctors at the moment is the loss of absorption of iron from the body in cases of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, celiac disease, and obesity. All of them cause an inflammation of the intestine's lining, and even if the patient takes their usual iron supplements, it's not enough to make up for the loss of iron. This is where sucrosomial comes in to save the day. Latest studies have proved that where oral iron salts couldn't restore the body's iron deposits, sucrosomial was able to do just that. So there you have it. Sucrosomial's got a lot of potential to solve the problems we face with most iron supplements on the market these days. We've talked enough about sucrosomial. Let's dive into some related news, starting with using nanochannels in medicine. Nanotechnology isn't a thing of fiction anymore. For the longest time, we've had difficulty studying the microscopic structure present inside our cells. The proteins, the DNA molecules, the small biological particles. It's not easy visualizing these. A bunch of researchers from a Chalmers University in Sweden have made a groundbreaking discovery of studying these biomolecules in their natural state using nanotechnology. Before this, scientists had to attach certain biological markers to observe these biomolecules under the microscope. It's been said that the attachment of such markers could alter the properties of the molecules, but this new technology allows you to observe the behavior of these these molecules in their natural state without any interference. This could pave the way for the development of more effective pharmaceutical drugs and vaccines. Next, COVID-19 vaccines for children under 5. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, in the U.S. has approved of two vaccines to be administered to children under 5 years of age. The approved vaccines are Pfizer and Moderna. Parents can get their children vaccinated once the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, sends in its approval of the administration of both vaccines. President Joe Biden shared how vaccine jabs can be given as early as next week once the approval from CDC comes in. Before that, they have to roll out instructions about how to administer the jab to children and what protocols to follow. And finally, the discovery of the gene associated with chronic pain. Researchers from the Newfield Department of Clinical Neurosciences at the University of Oxford have discovered a gene that's linked to long-term pain in humans. The gene's called NCX3 and is responsible for creating a protein called so sodium calcium exchanger type 3. It's found inside the neurons of the spinal cord that deal with mainly transmitting pain signals to and from the brain. Now, scientists are thinking of how they can use NCX3 as their target for treatments against chronic pain. This discovery is important because it means we may finally have a way to treat patients suffering from chronic illnesses since they have to bear a lot of pain in this lifetime. Any drug that has the ability to increase the activity of NCX3 bears the potential to lower pain sensitization. Let's hope something good comes out of this discovery. That's a wrap for this video. Interested in knowing about the latest pharmaceutical discoveries? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.